the coronavirus has resulted in a um, massive disruption of our daily lives and is likely to have historic political and social consequences. So I would like to share with you a systemic analysis of the corona pandemic, which means an analysis in terms of relationships and patterns, an analysis that shows how the various aspects and dimensions of the pandemic are all interrelated. In my view, the coronavirus must be seen as a biological response of Gaia, our living planet, to the ecological and social emergency that humanity has brought upon itself. It arose from an ecological imbalance and has dramatic consequences because of social and economic imbalances. During the last decades of the 20th century, humanity exceeded the Earth's carrying capacity, which means the number of people the biosphere can support without environmental degradation. World population has grown to 7.8 billion, and the irrational obsession of our political and corporate leaders with perpetual economic and corporate growth on a finite planet has created a multifaceted existential crisis, threatening the very extinction of human civilization. Well, scientists and environmental activists, among many others, have warned about the dire consequences of our unsustainable social, economic, and political systems for decades. But until now, our corporate and political leaders unable to break their intoxication with financial profits and political power, stubbornly resisted these warnings, focusing their attention on short-term economic and political fluctuations. They disregarded the impending catastrophic long-term consequences. Now, however, our political and financial elites are forced to pay attention as the COVID pandemic brought the earlier warnings into real time. The clear cutting of large areas of tropical rainforest by multinational food corporations, relentlessly pursuing excessive growth and profits, as well as massive intrusions into other ecosystems around the world, have fragmented these self-regulating systems and have fractured the web of life. Among the many consequences of these destructive activities was one that um, viruses which had lived in symbiosis with certain animal species where they did no harm, now in the fractured environment, jumped from those species to other animals and to humans where they are toxic or even deadly. So in the 1960s, an obscure virus jumped from a rare species of monkeys in West Africa to humans. From there, it migrated to the United States where it was identified as the HIV virus and caused the AIDS pandemic, which killed an estimated 39 million people over four decades. Similarly, the coronavirus jumped from a species of bats in China to humans and from there rapidly spread around the world. Now, in this spread of infections, population density is the key variable. And population density, and you see here, this is where systemic thinking comes in. Population density is often a consequence of excessive profit maximizing whether we talk about giant cruise ships or other forms of mass tourism, giant supermarkets, meatpacking plants, or crowded living conditions caused by uh, economic and social inequality. Ecology has taught us 
that maximizing a single variable will invariably lead to stress and vulnerability of the system as a whole. In previous times, these vulnerable social and cultural conditions were usually concealed by the corporate media. But now the coronavirus, which does not know any social or cultural boundaries, has laid them open. The role of social justice in a pandemic is a very interesting topic and another example of how you can apply systems thinking. You see, in normal times, the rich are relatively isolated from the poor. They live in their own neighborhoods, they have their own schools, hospitals, restaurants, clubs, and so on. And so the fate of the poor does not affect them directly. During a pandemic like COVID-19, the situation changes dramatically. Since the virus does not know any social boundaries, the fate of the poor can no longer be separated from that of the rich. Because of crowded living conditions, lack of access to clean water, and especially in the United States, inadequate health care and social protection, the poor are much more susceptible from being affected by the pandemic. And that's what the statistics show. There are disproportionately uh, high numbers uh, of infections and deaths among min minorities. But sooner or later, the poor will also infect the rich because although they are socially separated, they are not biologically separated. You see, there are numerous physical contacts between the rich and their personal assistants, drivers, delivery services, cleaning and maintenance staff, and so on. And through these physical contacts, the virus propagates regardless of social class. So during a pandemic, this is what we need to conclude. Social justice is no longer a political issue between left and right, but becomes an issue of life and death. To prevent the spread of pandemics now and in the future, it will be essential to improve the living conditions of the poor. More generally, we can say that ethical behavior, that is behavior for the common good, be uh, becomes a, an issue of life and death during a pandemic. Because a pandemic like COVID-19 can only be overcome by collective cooperative actions. Well, similar considerations, again, from a systemic perspective, apply to world population growth. Demographers have long known that the most effective means of curbing population growth is the education of girls and enhancing the role and status of women around the world, ensuring their access to economic and political power, and safeguarding their reproductive rights. Once again, we see that social justice goes hand in hand with ecological balance. Well, when the pandemic spread around the world, as you know, country after country went into lockdown with only essential businesses remaining open and most people being confined to their homes as we still largely are. As a consequence, the transportation of people and goods was radically reduced, supply chains were disrupted, businesses closed, the stock market collapsed, and unemployment soared. So the worldwide health crisis went hand in hand with a worldwide economic crisis. Both of these crises have led to widespread tragic consequences for individuals and communities around the world. However, from a planetary ecological perspective, there have also been a lot of very good consequences. 
As automobile traffic and industrial activities decrease dramatically, the pollution of major cities has suddenly disappeared. And once again, we can enjoy clear skies and clean air. Wildlife is flourishing in ecosystems undisturbed by humans. As giant cruise ships no longer enter the Venetian lagoon and other tourists stay at home, the canals of Venice have become so clear that fish can be seen again. In India, residents of Punjab are now able to enjoy a stunning view of the Himalayas, 2000 km, 200 kilometers away, which they have not seen for 30 years because of the pollution. The coronavirus has already been more effective in reducing CO2 emissions and slowing down the climate breakdown than all the world's policy initiatives combined. Now, this does not mean that we want to go on living in our present condition. You see, the current environmental regeneration has been the result of radically reduced human activities. The same positive effects could be achieved, not by radically reducing, but by radically changing our human activities. The world's COVID response has shown us what is possible when people realize that their lives are at stake, either individual in the current pandemic, or for civilization as a whole in the climate crisis. We know now that the world is able to respond with urgency and coherence once the political will has been aroused. With the COVID pandemic, Gaia has presented us with valuable life-saving lessons. The question is, will we have the wisdom and the political will to heed these lessons? And will we apply them to the climate crisis? Will we shift from undifferentiated, extractive economic growth to regenerative, qualitative growth? Will we replace fossil fuels with renewable forms of energy for all our energy needs? Will we stop excessive mass tourism and instead revitalize local communities? Will we replace our centralized energy intensive system of industrial agriculture with organic community oriented regenerative farming? Will we plant billions of trees to draw down CO2 from the atmosphere and restore the world's ecosystems so that viruses dangerous to humans are confined again to the animal species where they do no harm. Today, we have the knowledge and the technologies to embark on all these uh, initiatives. Will we have the political will? Well, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind, to quote Bob Dylan. However, what we see already is that corresponding social policies, which were unthinkable just a couple of months ago, are now being discussed seriously in various countries. For example, Denmark is planning to pay 75% of the salaries lost by employees in private companies to help them through the crisis. The UK similar, similarly plans to cover 80% of salaries. In the United States, the idea of a basic universal income, which was always considered a fringe idea, is now seriously discussed, even by Republican politicians. Spain is nationalizing its private hospitals. California is leasing hotels to shelter the homeless during the pandemic. The Green New Deal 
already endorsed previously by some democratic presidential candidates, is now being discussed in the mainstream as a program of economic recovery. If we can catalyze global leadership to continue such social policies, and if we can add to them policies that respect and cooperate with nature's inherent ability to sustain life, we may not only overcome the COVID pandemic, but also we may succeed in stabilizing world population and the climate, nurturing local communities, and restoring the Earth's ecosystem. We may see CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere return to the safe level of 350 parts per million. And we may see climate catastrophes become rare as they were in previous centuries. Looking back on 2020, future historians may conclude that even though the COVID pandemic had widespread tragic consequences for individuals and communities around the world, in the long run, it may have saved humanity and large parts of the community of life from extinction. 